today we will be replacing the fuel pressure regulator on my 9566 automatic. I went to the junkyard yesterday, picked up a new junkyard fuel pressure regulator. There were three fuel pressure regulators that I picked out or pulled, so I'm hoping that this is going to do it. And I cleaned it up a little bit, used some degreaser in a rag and cleaned it up. This has a coating on it. I'm not sure if you can tell. It has kind of a green tint to it, and that's a coating um, that you should not remove, so don't use sandpaper on these kind of parts that have that green tinted coating. That's a enamel baked coat of some kind, I'm guessing. For the fuel pressure regulator, you can pull anything from 1993 to 2002, I4 or V6, and they're all the same exact fuel pressure regulator, including this diameter, including the whole mounting bracket. The only difference between the V6 and the I4 is that this uh, nozzle is on this side, right here, on the KL. And on the KL, the vacuum line would then kind of go off in this direction and plug up to a, a vacuum line over here. Anyway, on the I-4, it just connects up right here, which is why that port is right here. As you can see, this is a real short hose. It only connects there to there, and then that's it. So, in order to take it off, all you need to do is remove the two 10 millimeter bolts, pop this off, and pull it straight out. And we're gonna do that. Now, in order to get to the fuel pressure regulator, you're gonna have to undo this clamp. And in my case, because this is not holding pressure, these are this line here, well actually both lines are unpressurized as you saw in my previous videos. And I'll link to those videos if you want. Um, so this is unpressurized, but in your case, if for whatever reason you need to replace this and your lines are pressurized, what you have to do is remove your fuel pump relay, which I've shown in other videos. So start the car, run the car, pull your fuel pump relay, the car will stall out, and that will depressurize your fuel lines. And then you can take this off and just have a rag under here. There will only be a couple drops at that point that come out. Um, just whatever is in, still in the hose right here. Uh, but it will be unpressurized so you don't have to worry about fuel spurting out at 45 PSI at you. Actually, I think it's like 37 PSI, but whatever. So let's go, let's get to it. Because you never can tell. Pressurized. Nice. Flathead screwdriver. And then you can kind of help walk this vacuum line off the end of the fuel pressure regulator. Might take a little bit of effort. Mine's just easy because I've removed it recently, but after a while they'll kind of mold around there. And the best method is to walk them back and forth a little bit, side to side, and then you should be able to pull it off a little bit more easy, easier. Alright, 10 millimeter. These aren't torqued down too much, so that's not going to take a lot of effort to crack them loose. Alright, when you're ready to remove the fuel pressure regulator, you just kind of pull. You might have to wiggle it a little bit because it does have a rubber seal on it. You should be able to basically pull straight out with it. And there's going to be fuel in there. There is a rubber ring around here that you're supposed to lube up with gasoline before you reinstall it. And that's basically all there is to that. Just make sure that you uh, you catch any any fuel that leaks out and don't smoke. All right, now to get gasoline to lube up your O-ring, you just take your this hose right here that was loose and you can just kind of point it down because there's going to be a little bit of gas left in there and can just kind of drip some on there. The reason that you want to lube up this o-ring is just so that it slides in there better and you're not going to scuff it up and if they're old and brittle they could snap the o-ring and then eventually you're talking about a gas leak at the fuel pressure regulator which is directly above your engine and that's fire hazard. A leaking o-ring on a fuel pressure regulator is a fire hazard. Well, leaking anything on a fuel pressure system is a fire hazard anywhere near the engine bay. But then it's just installed Fairly easy. Put your screws back, 10 millimeter, bolt it down, bolt it down evenly. Make sure not to strip the heads or the threads, but you want it on there as tight as you can get it. Vacuum hose back on. Reconnect your fuel line. And when you remove these kind of plier lock clamps, remember to orient them in a way that makes it easier to remove next time. There's always going to be a next time, trust me. Now that's all back on. Put your intake components back together. One thing that I'll do in order to get this 
uh, mass airflow sensor housing to slide back into the main intake boot easier is to just spray some lube right here. It's best if you use silicone lube because you're going you're using it against rubber, but PB Blaster will work pretty well temporarily. Screw down your clamp. And since it's on this side of your mass airflow sensor or VAF if you have a manual, you want this to be airtight. Everything from this side back has to be airtight. No air leaks back here. You can have air leaks up here, but anything past this, no air leaks. No air leaks allowed. And the next step, if you remember in previous videos, I installed this uh, Schrader valve as a fuel pressure testing port. Most cars have these days, they have these, but on our older 626s, we have to install these. These are aftermarket Schrader valves, which came with my Actron fuel pressure tester kit. So that's pretty neat. In order to install that, you just kind of, with one hand, always press down and then screw it in. Tight. Hand tight is good because there's a lot of threads, they're fine threads. And every time you use that, say you start your fuel pump, run your car, whatever, you want to come out here and you want to check that for leaks because Schrader valves are, uh, when used with a fuel pressure tester, can leak. So that's a, that's a hazard risk that you always want to keep an eye on when you do tests. And we're going to get our dedicated bleed off bottle bleed hose into the bottle. Next up, remove your fuse box, set the lid over there. And the reason you want to remove this is just in case something goes wrong and you're up here, instead of running back to remove uh, the key from the ignition, you can just pull your fuel pump relay. So that's kind of a safety tip. And the next thing is you want to get to your EEC connector. And we're going to be using uh, jumper wire, T-pins again, alligator clip, T-pin, you only need one. And this only goes in the side with the hole as I've explained in previous videos. One that may be, I think I labeled that one as fuel pressure regulator hold test. All right, and then you just get your other, the other end of your lead, and then we're just gonna attach that right there. With this fuel pump pin jumpered, all I have to do is go into the car, turn it to on, and my fuel pump will continuously run, and you should see pressure rise up on this, that we're hoping for 35 to 41 PSI, somewhere around in that range. I was a little bit low previously on 31 PSI, so I'm hoping that this is going to uh, to do better on that, and as well hold pressure. So I'm going to run it for 10 seconds, which basically means get it up to max pressure, turn the key off, and check for bleed down. And this is when you turn the key to on, this is priming, and we're right back to 25 PSI on the prime. So next is I'm going to turn the key off and see where we're at. and it immediately bleeds down, which is pretty much what I thought I was gonna do. It's bleeding down slower though. Now remove your jumper pins. So the next step, we're gonna start the car, run the car. All right, well, it means that my fuel pressure regulator is not the culprit, either that or that one's blown too, which is a real possibility because it's a junkyard part. But my guess is there's something else going on with the fuel trim and that I need to do a fuel injector test. And that's definitely next on the menu. Disappointed, but cool.